everyone, it's Miss Misella. Today I'm going to be reading you When Pegaso Met Mutis by Nina Layden. When Pegaso Met Mutis. Once there was a young pig named Pegaso. While other piglets rolled in the mud and played games, Pegaso painted. He painted anything and everything and in a most unusual way. At the same time, there once was a young bull named Mutis. Mutis was not like the other bulls. He wasn't interested in bullfighting. Mutis was happy only when he painted pictures, and he painted big, bold, bright pictures. In time, Word of Pegaso's talent spread throughout the pig provinces. Soon, art-loving pigs from all over lined up to buy his creations. At the same time, Mutis was getting famous in the cattle community. There weren't many households that didn't own a mooster piece. Pegaso and Mutis were becoming art superstars. But this came with a price. Everybody wanted to see them. Art buyers, art sellers, art students, art historians, art groupies. It was an art attack. One day, Pegaso got fed up and said, I'm tired of this noisy pig pen. At the same time, Mutis declared, I am sick of this crowded cow town. Needing a change, they both decided to look for a peaceful place where they could paint without distractions. So each of the two artists looked far and wide for the perfect spot. Pegaso found a lovely farm looking towards the east. Mutis found a handsome farm facing the west. After Pegaso moved in, he went to introduce himself to his new neighbor across the road. At the same time, Mutis went to introduce himself to his new neighbor across the road. That is how Pegaso met Mutis. And coincidentally, that is how Mutis met Pegaso. At first, Pegaso and Mutis were friendly and welcomed each other as neighbors. But soon, things began to change. It started one day when Pegaso criticized one of Mutis's paintings. Then Mutis made fun of one of Pegaso's. Mutis called Pegaso an art hog. Then Pegaso called Mutis a mad cow. Mutis quipped, you paint like a two-year-old. Pegaso retorted, you paint like a wild beast. Mutis raged, your colors look like mud. Pegaso spat, your paintings look like color by numbers. Then things really got out of hand. It was a modern art mess. Pegaso stormed off into his house. That Mutis doesn't like my art, he huffed. Well, I'll show him. And Mutis bullied his way into his house. I'll give that Pegaso something he can really criticize, he snorted. Then a full-scale feud erupted. But it was not a most unusual battle. Armed with ladders and buckets of paint, Mutis launched the first attack. He started at dawn. By the end of the evening, he had succeeded in transforming the outside of his house into a monster-sized mooster piece. Not to be outdone, Pegaso fired up his paintbrushes and in full view of the enemy, counterattacked. He turned his farm into a huge and outrageous pork of art. The two artists then retreated into their houses and pulled down the shades. 
Pagasso certainly didn't want to look out his window and stare at a Moutisse, and Moutisse had no desire to give his rooms a view of a Pigasso. <coughs> this presented a problem, and there seemed to be only one solution. Without a word to each other, Pigasso and Moutisse each began to build a huge wooden fence down the middle of their road. At first, Pigasso and Muti seemed satisfied. Both artists went back to painting by themselves. But after a while, Pigasso was surprised to find that he missed that bullheaded Muti. At the same time, Mutis found his studio empty without the presence of a pig-headed Pagasso. Pagasso pondered, that Mutis isn't such a bad artist. He has some interesting ideas. Mutis moaned, that Pagasso may not paint like me, but he knows what he's doing. However, being naturally pig-headed and bull-headed, neither artist knew how to apologize to the other. So they did what they do best. They let their paintbrushes do the talking. Pegasso painted on one side of the fence and Mutis painted on the other. Each worked until they were exhausted. It was strangely quiet when they were done. Then, curious to see what Mutis had been doing, Pegaso sprinted around to the other side. At the same time, Mutis galloped over to Pegaso's side. The silence was broken as the two artists began laughing at their amazing work of heart. From that day on, Pegaso and Mutis became became great friends. They happily took down the fence that shared their different views. A few months later, a big museum bought the fence. Pegasso called his side when Pegasso met Mutis, and Mutis called his side when Mutis met Pegasso. The critics called it incredible. The true story of Picasso and Matisse. Picasso and Matisse were not a pig and a bull, but they were characters. They were two of the finest artists in the 20th century. While they were never neighbors, they became close in a small world of art. Henry Matisse was born on December 30, 31st, 1869 in France. Matisse didn't want to be an artist when he was little. He studied to be a lawyer, but when he was 21, he got sick with appendicitis. While he was getting better, he painted his first painting. He liked painting so much that he ended his law career. Pablo Picasso was born on October 25th, 1881 in Spain. His father was an art teacher who helped Picasso start painting when he was very young. It was soon obvious that he was very talented. Picasso studied painting in Barcelona and Madrid, two big cities in Spain. But as he was growing as an artist, Picasso decided to move to Paris, which was and still is a great city for art. That is where Picasso met Matisse. Both Picasso and Matisse were gaining recognition as artists in Paris. In fact, two Americans named Leo and Gertrude Stein, who lived there, started collecting their paintings. In 1906, Gertrude Stein had a party, and that is where Picasso and Matisse met for the first time. At first, Picasso and Matisse were friendly to each other. They even traded paintings. Matisse also gave Picasso an African mask, which inspired him to paint in a primitive style a style he became very famous for. But soon it became apparent that Picasso and Matisse 
were becoming rivals and competitors. Picasso said some bad things about Matisse's paintings, and Matisse said some bad things about Picasso's. But over time, the two artists learned to respect each other and became lifelong friends. They both owned many of each other's paintings. Matisse once told Picasso, we must talk to each other as much as we can. When one of us dies, there will be some things the other will never be able to talk of with anyone else. Matisse died in 1954. Picasso died in 1973. But their art lives on in many museums, galleries, and private collections around the world. Thanks for listening to my story, When Picasso Met Matisse. Bye, everyone.